All right, before we get started, I want to say thanks to one of our new sponsors. They're one of the leaders in clinical research within this profession of physical therapy, ATI. With more than 900 of their clinics placing the 100th percentile in CMS's merit-based incentive program for the second consecutive year, uh, the team published over 20 peer-reviewed articles in 2022 alone, and they'll be presenting eight different lectures at CSM in San Diego. Can't wait to feel the warmth. Uh, we all know how important it is to stay up to date on what's going on in physical therapy, and ATI Physical Therapy are doing some really important work. If you want to jumpstart your career and join a team that's doing that, go to ATIPT.com. That is ATIPT.com. Travis Brown is somebody I've followed for a while on socials, mostly on Instagram. So why are we having like a guy like Travis on this physical therapy podcast? Travis is a guy who is a keynote speaker and coach. He takes hundreds of creators to more than 10,000 followers and millions of views and downloads and five-figure months. And he does it with individuals fast. So why are we having someone like Travis on this show? I want you to be able to figure out how you can turn your knowledge into money or your knowledge into attention and that attention into patience or revenue. You can do these things. Travis agrees. He's going to walk you right through that. We're really going to talk about reels because it's something that's becoming more and more important. And it sort of popped up six to eight months ago. And I think a lot of people are still trying to figure it out. And Travis is a guy that's done that well so that's why you're going to take a listen to travis thanks to physiotech for supporting the program they're one of our sponsors now too their question to you is would adding an additional 290 dollars per patient per quarter help your clinic remote patient monitoring can do that but you might think remote patient monitoring it's complicated it's time consuming but what if i told you it wasn't and it didn't have to be you could improve patient outcomes reduce provider frustration and bottom line, improve your clinic revenue. Find out how to get started, no strings, with remote therapeutic monitoring. Go to physiotech.ca, that's physiotec.ca. And our friends from MW Therapy, delivering a modern, all-in-one, outpatient PT EMR with the built-in patient portal, marketing automations, and billing features you want at a great value. mwtherapy.com is where you should go where switching your EMR is easy. All right, let's get to the show. Here is Travis Brown. Let's start the show. And I'm, I am never too proud to bring my own crowd effects and we bring it in. Uh, <laughs> Travis Brown, welcome to the show. Hey, it's good to be here with you. Thanks so much for letting me be on your amazing podcast. Been watching you uh, on Instagram at Travis Brown for a long time now. So before we hit record, I was like, this is real weird. Like, you know, there's somebody I kind of stare at. It's got to be weird for you. I stare at you several times a day or whatever when I see your reels or your posts pop up. And now I'm like, there he is. And I'm talking to him when I'm on my phone. Like, oh, that's a good idea. But now there he is on my screen and on my podcast. And he's talking back to me. That is the beauty of social media is that it can connect us I mean, I was looking back at my Rolodex of people I hang out with these days, and they're all people that are friends from the internet. I rarely yeah. hang out with like friends from college or high. It's all new people from the internet. So yeah. um, it's a very powerful tool, social media, podcasting, the internet. It's all wonderful. I think you're leaving a really important part of that out is, is what you do and what I think a lot of people who listen to this show are tr at least doing or trying to do, which is the give. Right. I mean, like oh, yeah. you're not just on there, you're on there and you're giving. And when you give, 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 people wind up showing up. And when you give sort of selflessly for things that, you know, can help their problem or help them go from to and achieve people show up and they continue to show up. And that that's really the foundation for what you just talked about, which is a relationship. Yeah, I think social media used to be look at what I'm doing and now it's look what I can do for you. And, Ooh, like you know, that, yeah. most people think that a personal brand is like their logo and their colors. Nice. Your personal brand is really just your reputation. And so my goal has always been, you know, create a reputation around myself that I'm a helpful person, that I'm trying, you know, that I'm giving away all this information so that people trust that what I'm sharing with them is actually legitimate information. And um, I hope that I hope that stands up over time, but, you know, give people what they want. And I, I forget what the quote is. There's some cliche quote that's like, if you give people what they want, you'll never work a day in your life or something like that. Just give like them that. what they want. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really is understanding who you are excited to communicate to, ident identifying what gaps 
they might have in knowledge or ability or, or, yeah. or where they want to go and then saying, okay, where can I honestly help you? And I'll do this exercise with companies I consult for, which is like list all the problems for your ideal audience member or customer or patient, whatever you want to say. And then I'll throw some, they'll say like, well, back for physical therapist, back pain or shoulder, want to return to running. And then I'll say, what about a flat, the person might have a flat tire and they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, I use that as like, understand that you can help the first three, but maybe not the fourth, right? So this is where like the so social media or the internet allows you to niche down. I want you to actually think narrow. And I, you know, before we hit record, I told you I used to be a broadcaster. Yeah. And when I had to, when I really wrapped my head around what podcasting was or how this tool of the internet or smartphones could be, it really is narrow casting. When you can speak, you can yeah. actually be super narrow and flip that funnel way upside down and actually you get better results by what by are, be, by being very specific yeah if you uh spend any time on social media you're gonna figure out really quickly that you know you need to have an outcome attached to what you do because people are following you and they're actually trading their time just like this podcast Correct. someone has traded in their time to listen to that and their time is the most valuable asset that that exists you know for anybody so when you value people's time and you show up in a way that is you know increasing their value increasing their upskilling them then you become a very very influential person very fast regardless of how many followers you actually have correct yeah impact I mean, and i did an oxford debate at, at, at the next conference a few years ago it was sort of like an on-stage tongue-in-cheek debate and the prompt was is social media hazardous to the profession of physical therapy. And I was assigned a side and mine was, it is hazardous. Now this was not, is it good or bad? Yeah. But one of my sort of closing, you know, like, like uppercuts was, you know, be careful of the highlight reel. Cause a lot of times it can be this highlight reel. Look what I am, look what I have done. And I think I tell people all the time that puts for me anyway, it puts distance between me and who I want to talk to sometimes. Right. I want to close that distance, which is like, I see what you're trying to do. Let me show you three ways, and you do this so well, and we're going to get into that now, which is like, here's three ways you can improve that. Um, so I want to start by 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 highlighting something that you have a give, but you sell this at your website, and that's pod decks. How would you yeah. describe what pod decks are? Like, how would you like tell people like what they are? Maybe why? I mean, I don't know if I should have any or anything like that, but maybe I bought all of them. Um, <laughs> how would you, you describe all these things for the podcast audience, the, the live streamers or, or the, the video people are watching these? How do you describe what these things I'm, in, I'm holding in my hand are? Yeah, so pod decks are really a tool for creators to spark great conversations. And yes. I like to think of it as a way to gamify a podcast. I like to think of it as a way to get unique answers to questions that you normally wouldn't get on other shows. So someone like me, I do a lot of podcasts. And if people ask me the same questions... They're not always going to get the exact same answer, but you know, there's going to be something there that's the same. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can use these, you could use pod decks to, you know, get somebody just warmed up to break the ice, to make them comfortable on right. your podcast. You can use them to make a game portion of your show. You can use them to plan your show. You can use them to go live. I asked my wife those questions sometimes, and I've been married to her forever and I still learn something new about her. So and you never get the same answer twice. Yeah. And, you know, Poddex was really just an accidental business. It was a it was a product of it was a gift that I was going to give to people who bought a podcasting course. And what happened was, is that I launched this course and a few people bought it. And then I started to get nervous. So I started to promote the cards more. You're going to get this deck of cards. And what happened was people emailed me and said, I don't want the course, but the those card. cards are awesome. And I, I really honestly, I rejected that idea i said i'm not a deck company i'm not a card deck company this is just a gift and then you know you have to listen to what the market wants and so i listened and here we are today you know it's a mobile app it's i've you know i've connected with so many great people just through a deck of cards which which is really an interesting uh story and i'm very grateful for that accidental product so i use it i haven't used it on the show i've thought about making a segment about it right um, I, I use it for thinking about definitely prep, right? So, you know, it's, it's a deck that I've got, I don't know, six, six of your decks and I'll take them out and I'll thumb through them and say, Ooh, didn't think about that. Cause now I might've seen that card a dozen times, but I know the next three people I'm talking to and I'm like, Ooh, there's a cool twist. And yeah. that was something I learned in radio, which is, you know, right now, as we record the world cups going on, 
great. Let's take our radio station and the World Cup. And when we add those together, w- w- what do we get? Do we get a twist? Is there a promotion? Is there a contest? Can we do something? Maybe yeah. not, but maybe. And it's just, I like these. I, I say, they don't tell you where to go, but these are on ramps to different highways. And you're like, ooh, I haven't been on that highway yet, but this this made me think about it. Now, the reason I highlight pod decks and most of my audience does not have a podcast, right? Hopefully they just listen yeah. to mine. I don't want them to launch their own. Um, <laughs> is physical therapists spend a lot of time talking to their patients, right? And what yeah. I don't want you to do, and what Travis doesn't want podcasters to do, is I don't want you to ask the same three damn questions. Travis, famously in physical therapy, on Monday, Tuesday, or when, uh, Monday and Tuesday, PTs ask, how was your weekend? And on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's, what are you doing this coming weekend? Sure. I made a t-shirt about this and we sold about 50 of them. <laughs> nice. I did like Monday, two, I did like the days of the week and I said, these are the questions you ask. And I was essentially just poking fun at this is what we do. But what I wanted people to think or what I wanted people to see was there's different ways to look at the same conversation. Yes, there are some clinical questions that you need. Actually, there's answers you're looking for. You can get them a variety of different ways. You don't have to answer the same. You have to use the same question, the same tool to get the same result all the time. And that's, to me, what Poddex did, which I love. It seems like you need to make a physical therapist version of that. I know. All right. Steal this business idea. Yeah, steal it, right? Like it's a deck of cards, you know, is a commodity. And anytime you can attach something cool to a commodity, then that's a great business idea, right? So you know, Poddex is cool because it's very open-ended. It's very, it, it could be applied to anything, but you could reverse that and just go, hey, listen, physical therapists struggle with making small talk. Here's the PT small talk deck. And you would be surprised that, you know, people actually want a shortcut to make conversations more easy. And, you know, I just went through physical therapy and my guy was great. We had a lot of great conversations and, as he was chatting with me during those sessions, you know, I felt like I could trust him that that I, that I was building a bond with him that not only were we trying to, you know, make improvements on my shoulder pain, but, you know, I looked forward to going in and having the next conversation with him. So there is a lot of benefit to communication. We've been sitting around campfires for thousands of yes. years telling each other stories. That's what a podcast is. That's what a TV show is. And that's what conversations are. And I do this one little trick with people and people bring it up to me all the time. But when I'm around a new person, I will genuinely be interested in them. I'll ask them questions. And all I do is I remember one key thing from that conversation. So let's say the person tells me that their kids are in basketball, right? Uh, The next time I see that person, I will remember what we talked about. And I will say, hey, how are the kids doing in basketball? And they're always like, how did you remember that like you know when you show interest in people and actually remember things about them you make this incredible impression on them connection and it yeah it creates a deeper connection it creates a, a closer bond and you know the entire world is based around networking and relationships and so if you can kind of master that whether it be through pod decks or any other tool yeah. you will see an uptick in your life overall yes. Yes. Uh, I was giggling when you said campfire. I tell people that all the time. I say, I know you want to talk to everybody. You yeah. know, you want to have your blog or your website, your PT practice, right? Remember that the person on the receiving end, I don't care how you're reaching them. The person on the receiving end has a brain and that brain is re- is wired for what we did and what we you know hope to still do around the campfire. Yeah, And it is, th- they're interested in things like story and we're going to get into that now when we talk about reels but story can you tell me an interesting story can you get to it quickly so some people poo poo especially people who can't who can't like i don't know be be, be open minded they poo poo they they even use words or they'll they'll say like i don't know why don't you just you know it's a tiktok you know it's it's, it's this thing that the kids are doing these days yeah. so so i want to talk about reels so you got long form what we're doing right now, been talking for 15 minutes so far, yeah. right? It's long form. We're going to have a conversation when you got some time. And there's a time and place for that. I don't think people are long or short form. I think people are people and we do both. So let's go to the other end of the spectrum. Uh, we're going to talk about reels. Physical therapists are like, you know, I, I have a lot of pushback when I tell PTs to communicate. Friends of mine, 
you need to create content to draw to do everything we just talked about. Create connections, draw people in. And they'll say, I don't have time for that. You know, Jimmy, you're doing half hour podcasts. I don't have time for that. I, this is the they have they are out of excuses. There are no more arrows in their excuse quiver. Yeah. When you look at something like reels. So when you're explaining reels to people, pretend the audience has, I mean, of course, you've been touched by them. We, you can't not see them, right? Yeah. Where do you start on saying maybe you should, or maybe you shouldn't be creating reels? And then where does the conversation go? Yeah. So I think the reason that you would want to use reels or TikToks or YouTube shorts is because that is where all the people are right now. Human consumption prefers short form video over all other mediums. Now, yes, longer form stuff is where people go after they've found you, but right. how do they find you? Right? right. And so an app like TikTok is basically stream of consciousness and it keeps looking at what you're looking at and showing you more of what you want. They want to keep you on the app. And so if you can think about putting yourself on the main highway, right? Like you could have a billboard anywhere, but why wouldn't you want it where all the traffic is? It's the same right. concept. And so right. if you're not creating video content, you're not on the highway. Now I'll actually bolster that by saying, learning how to produce short form content will expand all elements of your business because short form content and, and doing it well is having the ability to be concise, get people excited about any topic. So when you learn how to do that, your sales calls get easier, your emails get easier because you're able to disseminate a lot of information concisely quickly, and quickly. Yeah. And so that's the name of the game right now. And so if you have a, you know, PT, um, you know, product, or, you know, if you're trying to explain something complex to your, your client or your um, patient, and you could do that quickly and, and get them excited about it, then you're going to win because people are going to feel like they're, they get what they need from you and they actually understand. Nobody likes jargon. Nobody likes to feel stupid. And Please so, say that again to the audience yeah, about jargon. Please say yeah, that. Nobody, nobody likes jargon. The, the average oh. reading level in, in the United States of America is sixth grade. So if you think about that, yes, using big words makes you sound more intelligent or maybe you paid a lot for your education and you're really utilizing it. But we yeah. need to take complex things and make them simple. So things like analogies, um, you know, things like uh, a story within a story, you know, those are the kind of things that actually get people to actually remember what you said. Right. And so, you know, in my last PT journey, you know, I had somebody show me all these exercises and the way that he explained it to me, I felt like it took like eight times as long as it should have, right? He was basically yeah. reading it off of a piece of paper. And I thought to myself, this is a guy who has good intentions, but doesn't have his communication skills down. And I think that's where short form video upskills all human beings and communicating right. is being forced to be concise. Right. I saw PD. So I was in pediatric. I was in orthopedics with adults and pediatrics. And what you're explaining how I how I explain something to the same thing with a kid and an adult. Do you think it was different? Of course it was. Yeah. It was simpler. It was easier. Did I use big words? Of course not. Not with a kid. Why would I with an adult? And I think it has to do with this framing of several things you just said. Well, we go to school for seven years to become physical therapists. Did you know that? Did I did I mention that I have this type of degree as I brush the dirt off my yeah. shoulders? Yeah. But what is the goal? The goal is to make sure Travis understands three exercises and, do, and does them every day. That's right. the goal. So why wouldn't you make them fun? Why wouldn't you make them a little goofy or give them a funny name? Why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you explain them in Travis terms, right? Yeah, exactly. I I, th there's a myriad of reasons, right? Maybe I'm not great at it. And I used to, I mean, I launched this podcast and I was like, how is a PT student able to get so many PTs to pay attention? And I realized I was just doing it the other way. I was a student and I came into this knowing I am super curious, but I don't know anything, but I'm going to use this podcast as a device to learn stuff. And oh, by the way, people can come and listen too. what I also think is when you're working in a clinic and you watch six other PTs around you do sing things a certain way, we assimilate, right? There's that famous, that elevator um, practical uh, video that that hidden video show back in the 70s. Everybody was in on the gag except for one guy in the elevator. And on cue, they all turned around. They didn't face the door. Then the guy was like, I don't know what to do. He turned around. It just shows yeah. that we're susceptible to following other people's leads. 
I'm here to tell you, follow your own lead, yeah. right? Follow your own lead and make sure that what is the goal? The goal is to get Travis to do those dang exercises. It's not to make, it's not to look just like everybody else in the clinic. And I think we forget that. Yeah. If you think about like, if we connect what I did with pod decks and you turn it into something for physical therapists, it's like, you know, physical therapy is something that you do because you're either in pain or, you know, it's not necessarily something you might look forward to. And if you can gamify that, if you can make uh, it fun, then your practice is just going to get referral after referral after referral. So it's really about it's, you know, there's a term called ELI five. Explain it like I'm five. Yeah. Sometimes I will literally stop people and say, listen, I you're you're crushing it but I just want you to explain it like I'm five. And then they explain it so fast. They don't talk in baby talk or anything, but it's right. like, if you can just go, okay, how can I make this concept as simple and fun as possible? You win every single time. Yes. Um, I think the next generation of people uh, right now, the the adults, the 40, 50, 60 year old, they're poo pooing on the reels and the TikToks. Yeah. And they're like, well, it's just, you know, what is it? Nobody's got an attention span anymore. I think they are going to be so good because to me, reels and TikToks and all those short form, they're forced brevity. I yeah. tell you, you have to explain a concept in 60 seconds and they do it. They do it in 15 seconds. Are you familiar with, you said EL. Uh, ELI5, yeah. ELI5. Are you familiar with Parkinson's Law? Oh, I've heard that name before, but I don't know. I can't. Parkinson's Law is this concept is if you give your kids a week to clean their room, it's going to take a week. If you give them a day to clean their room, magically it takes a day. If you give them an hour, clean, so the time it takes to complete a task expands or contracts with how much time you're given, right? Yeah. And it's not really a law, but I like to say it a law because it makes it sound serious. I gamified it. <laughs> but if I asked PTs to explain five exercises and I didn't give them a time, I guarantee everybody would take 20 minutes. But Travis yeah. ain't got 20 minutes and he ain't going to pay attention for more than 20 seconds. So what I'm getting at is these reels, you might poo poo them now. I know Jimmy's just saying, do one more communications thing, but I'm a PT. I'm telling you, if you want to impact more people, spend a day a month or a long day, a quarter creating these. Cause look, we're talking about, Oh, this is just a couple seconds each. Then create a quarter's worth in a day and you'll have forced brevity. It'll make you a better communicator with your patients and Oh, more people will understand what you do and they'll show up. Yeah, I think the difference between short form and long form content is that people are looking for like instant gratification. They're looking for something they can go do right now, like immediately that's going to help them out. So if you were, you know, if you were to say, hey, you have back pain because you sit in a chair all, all day, here's three exercises that you can right. do. You, you know, if somebody has back fit pain and they are like looking for an opportunity to fix that and you give them that answer, you know, you are your value just goes up so much further and then everybody you know who's everybody who may be poo-pooing short form content needs to realize this if your toilet clogs and you go to youtube and you search how to unclog my toilet and you see a three minute video a five minute video and a 10 minute video you're yes. always clicking the three minute video because why would you watch a 10 minute video if somebody else can show you correct minutes? think about what we just talked about eight minutes ago right time is value yeah. I can teach it in three minutes. It's like, name that tune. Well, I can teach it in a minute and a half. Yep. You must be better at doing it. Therefore, you're more valuable. Therefore, you have won my time. This goes back to my two my two phrases, right? I tell people, I tell the audience, there's two phrases you should pay attention to. Pay. I just said it. Pay attention, spend time. Pay attention, spend time. And those are transactional phrases, yeah. whether it's in clinic, whether it's on these smartphones, whether it's on the computer, whether it's driving by a billboard. Pay attention, because you got pay and spend and attention and time. You want one, you got to do the other. And I know you might be poo pooing it now, but they poo pooed TV, they poo pooed the internet. And uh, my friends, yeah. uh, we're talking to each other on the internet right now. <laughs> exactly. What What about uh, in terms of like macro process? All right, this will be the last reel. Is the question we'll move on. All right, I'll do this. People always skip to what camera should I buy? What about lights? And I always say, listen, pencil and paper. Let's talk about ideas first. How do you, because now I'm lost. Now I'm in, but now I don't know where to go. I feel like confused. Where do you tell, what's the net, what's the three steps that they should do? The first three things they should do. Yeah. So the first thing is you want to just do a quick little bit of research. So type your keywords into TikTok or YouTube and see what all the most popular videos are. What's the topic? What's the first thing they say in the video? I don't really want to post anything without it having a good shot of doing well. 
right? Yep. So I won't even make the video until I have a hook or I have the first thing I want to say in the video. So just by doing a little bit of research, you're basically splitting yourself from, and the analogy I use is a lottery ticket. Everyone wants a million views, right? It's like winning the lottery. So you can either buy a lottery ticket that has zero numbers. You have to guess all seven, or you can do some research uh -huh. and you're going to have five of the seven numbers filled out. You only need to guess two. Which one do you want? You want the one with the five numbers. And so that's what a little bit of research, and I'm talking about five minutes. I'm not talking about hours of research. We just need to know what's doing well right now. What's top of mind right now? What are the problems right now? And from there, we can simply write out some bullets. And the reason we're going to write out some bullets is because it's going to keep us on track and it's going to keep us concise. Have you ever seen a video where the person actually looks like flustered in it? It's because they tried to do it in one take so many times that by the time they actually posted it, they were visibly upset. Right. So by just knowing what you want to say before you press record, it's going to be a lot easier. You're going to make a lot faster. I actually do something called shooting for the edit where I write out my bullets and I just read the line. I don't have to memorize anything. I read the line and I say it in three different inflections. Yep. Right. And I just go to the, the editing floor and I say, that's the best one. That's the best one. That's the best. and I put it all together. And then I look like I'm this genius. I look like I'm just like, bam, bam, bam. You don't see me messing it up three times. You don't see the ones that I didn't put in the video, but I can go faster that way. And so one of the things that holds people up with video is I'll wait until I get the camera. Well, your phone has a better computing system um, than the does. Apollo space mission. So just use what you have. And I'm worried about what people will think about me. Let me tell you something. Nobody is thinking about you. Nobody. They're all thinking about themselves. What am I going to eat for lunch? How am I going to pay my bills? If somebody does criticize you, you need to remember two things. One, nobody doing more than you will criticize you ever. Yes. Two, when people criticize other people, they are basically reflecting the way they feel about themselves onto you. So you really have nothing to lose. And then as you do it, you just think at the back of your head, I'm going to get 1% better each video. This makes it really easy to just go. I made my video. Now I'm going to make this one a little bit better. I'm just going to try a little bit harder. And over 365 days a year, you're going to compound that. And it keeps compounding and you just get better and better until you are just super comfortable sitting in front of a camera and talking. And last I checked, nobody, you know, got hurt from reels. You know, as long as you're not doing any hate speech or anything right. crazy, right? not really, there's not really that many bad things that can happen to you. So, um, so after you've done the research, after you've filmed the video, I think the most important part is to pay attention to what's working. A lot of people change it every day. They change it up every day. I got to make something new. People want something new. They actually don't. Virality comes from predictability and not creativity. And this Wait, took me a long Virality comes from predictability, not creativity. Okay. And so this took me a long time to learn because I'm a creative person. I want to show up every day with a new idea and a new concept. And all I was doing was confusing people. And so the analogy that I use for this is I go to the Discovery Channel because I want to see some stuff about aliens or pyramids or mountains right. and a football game's on, right? Um, yes, yes. I'm going to go, wait a minute, I must huh? be on the wrong channel. And so I change the channel and then I realize I am on the Discovery Channel. Now I'm angry because my expectation was that you were going to give me something that I wanted. The same thing applies with your social media account. So a lot of people think they're repeating themselves, but really you have to repeat things for it to sink in. And so by being more predictable with your content, you'll actually confuse people a lot less. So once something actually works for you, do it again. Do something similar again, right. because if it works, it can work again. And that's where most people lose is they think they have to show up and they're like, I'm going to do a trend today. I'm going to show my dog tomorrow. I'm going to do this video. And then people that are following you are like, what, what is it that I'm following again? Yeah, follow, don't right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. I like that a lot. Um, as a guy who used to run radio stations, people would say all the time, you know, how come you play the same, you know, why is, why is top 40 called top 40? I was like, yeah. well, they used to play 40 songs on, on repeat. They'd play yeah. one, two, three to 40. Then they do it again. Well, people will hate that. They've tried radio stations that did the other way, that played, that had a library of 10,000 songs. Yeah. They don't exist, right? Yeah. We see this when we play uh, Apple Music and Spotify. People like a variety to a point. Yep. And then they like 
generally predictability. And I used to, my analogy was we have a center line at the radio station. My radio station was a rock radio station, right? So Pearl Jam, Foo Fighters, Nirvana. That's our, that's the center line. That's the yellow line on the road. Okay. I can, t- I can jump a little bit to the left and play something a little uh, younger and a little, uh, a little more emo, right? Two in a row. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's a football game on the Discovery Channel. I got to come right back to the middle and throw yep. some Pearl Jam in there. I can go to the right and play some Led Zeppelin. Still rocks. A little, little older. Yeah. Come right back to the middle. Do that with your content. I'm telling you, it yeah. confuses people less. Give them the hits. It's just like a concert. You know, if you go see yeah. ACDC play, they're going to play back in black. They're going to do it. And you're going to cheer. <laughs> I was at a I was at a Survivor concert and I am not making this up. This is years ago. They opened with, played in their main set and played the encore Survivor. They played Survivor three times. Yep. Want to know why? They understood what the audience came. To. Yeah, I'm sure they have some other songs, right? I'm sure some of you can name them. People understood. Hey man, play that Rocky song one more time. Yeah, and they played exactly. it three times. You know what? That's your thing. Do your thing. Yep. Uh, website that we want to send people to uh, to find out more with Travis socialboom.com slash millions. What are they going to find there? What, 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 you know, what are they going to find when they go there? What are you, what are you projecting in terms of that's your discovery channel? What are they going to taste when they go there? Yeah. So the, the program that we're running is called reels millionaire and we actually um, coach you for six months to go from zero to a million views. And so we take you through the exact process that we use on our own accounts, which is how to do the right research how to know what content to even post, um, how to refine that content. So we're going to make sure that your videos are getting better and better. And in this program, you get on a weekly coaching call with us and we actually give you directives on your specific account. So there's nothing else out there like it. And you never really get to talk to the people that make courses. That's why I really don't like courses is because it's like a one size fits all thing that's supposed to work for everybody. And I don't think that that's true for short form video content. You do have to have some specifics. So I can actually do you one better. You can go to 10 X video view And you could go through the 10 day challenge where each day I'll show you exactly what we've talked about, how to research, how to write a script, how to shoot for the edit, how to add captions, how to do everything so that you make your best video ever and understand the process so you can go out there and do it yourself. I like that. Giving people something to follow. I mean, I love the, at the I love how you say follow, right? Because that's the word we use. Like, follow me on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram. You better be you better be leading me somewhere. You better be leading me somewhere I want to go. If you are expecting me to follow, um, you talk a lot about steal this idea, steal this side hustle, steal yeah. this business. Yeah. When did that start? Because all of a sudden, I just realized I was like, I've seen ten of these, and then now that's one of your things. Explain to people what it is who maybe don't follow you at Travis Brown yet on Instagram. Explain what it is and how did I'm curious how did it come about because it wasn't yeah. something you did and then it is. Yeah. So that all came through testing. So I was testing different hooks and I was trying to come up with my own signature hook. So the hook is here's a business idea, do something with it. And so. When you see that, you think, okay, I know he's going to give me an idea. And I'm also sort of tongue in cheek challenging you to actually get off your butt. Right. And so uh, as I was testing different content styles, it was because people kept asking me how to make money. And so I have a whiteboard over here that just has endless amounts of ideas. I'm an ideas person, but right now I don't have the bandwidth to execute them. So I looked at that list and I said, why don't I just tell people about these? So they can go do them and maybe someone will make some money and these will come out into the world, right? I don't need that be in every business. And so I just started giving away my business ideas. And what happened was, is one of them went viral. It got like 2 million views. And so now you see it all the time because I'm bringing you the hits. When something works, you do Do it again. again. So when that video hit 2 million views, I stopped everything and every single video opened up. Here's a business idea. Do something with it. And so... You know, then what happened from there is another million views, another million views, 500,000 views, because I was giving people what they expected and what they want. So there is a testing period and you do have to be open to the fact that you might test something and it doesn't work, but that doesn't mean you're a failure. It just means you're experimenting. So scientists fail all day long until they get a result, right? You have to be like that through your social media content and you have to be reflective. Oh, that video worked. What worked about it? Was it the topic was, and then do it again and then do something similar again and see if you can 
get those views up. So it was all testing. I spent the entire year this year pivoting from podcasting to side hustles. And it was very hard. It was like trying to put on someone else's clothes for a minute because you're so used to talking about one thing and then you're finding yourself in another place. Sure. But I think the finding yourself is the entire journey. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best part. So if you think you want to do video, here's my challenge for you. Just film something on your phone and don't publish it. Just look at it and go, what do I like about this? How can I improve this? Get comfortable seeing yourself. And if it lights you up, maybe it's something you'd like to do. I resisted reels. I used to make carousels. When reels came out, I said, I'm never doing that. That's stupid. That's what I said. And now it's my favorite thing to do. I'm absolutely yeah. obsessed with video content. I consider myself an idea, guys, too. I ironically, like if 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 I looked at myself, I would I would like to say I'm an early adopter, but I'm similar to you where I look at something and I'm kind of like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to smell this for a while before I, I don't know. You know what? Maybe. And it's almost like that meme where the girl's like, yes. And then she's like, mm. and then she's like, yeah. oh, maybe <laughs> almost like that. And then I, I wind up coming around. I wish, I don't know. You know what? I, I wish I am who I am because it's gotten me where I've, it, where it's gotten me. But I see a lot of people who I, I, I do admire someone who goes, here's a new thing. I'm in all in. Yes. Why? I don't know. And I'm like, I kind of, I kind of admire people like that a little bit. Yeah, because you're either you're either going to get a great result fast or it's not going to work fast. Fail so fast, right? Expedite the time. Like my wife will, um, she just got home. Hi. Uh, she'll put something in a cart online and she'll wait to buy it. And then she'll oh, say, oh, it's sold out. And I'm like, why did you just buy it? Right? Like trust your instincts. Move fast. Yeah. Move fast towards the good result. Move faster away from the bad result. Yeah. So you mentioned side hustles, right? I mean, that's where like, you know, steal this, steal yeah. this idea came from a lot of PTs. I, I, I pay attention. Everybody knows me as the guy who talks, but I do read and listen a ton on the platforms that my audience is on because I yeah. want to understand and where reimbursement is as a physical therapist or I mean, this is the world people. It's not just physical therapy. People are looking to do the side hustles, right? Mm -hmm. We're uh, we're experimenting with Airbnbs. Uh, I recently just got into flipping cars with my neighbor. I don't know where this is going to go, but I said yes. We've, in case you're in the Travis, in case you're in the market for a two door Hyundai Elantra, I got something for you, my man. I used to drive a Hyundai Elantra. I, so. Who doesn't like a Hyundai Elantra? I got one for you. But in terms of side hustles, right, non specific to PTs, but they're listening, and a lot of them are going, "All right, well, if I need to add something." Um, you know, what's your, what's your quick three? What's, what's your, what's your, what would you put in your script for a reel for side hustles, how to identify and then how to execute maybe? Yeah. So it's, it's going to be, you know, uh, a side hustle is something that you can do with less effort, right? So think about, um, for PTs, right? There's probably all kinds of like documents or stretches or, um, exercises or things like you could make templates of those and sell them. Right. So like you make it once and you sell it over and over again. That would be a good idea as a side hustle. Anything that solves somebody's problem. And even if it's a small problem. So some of the side hustles I've created, it's just like podcasters are introverts. They don't know how to talk to people. Well, here's pod decks. Right. Or, you know, maybe you have a brick and mortar location and you do a laundromat because people need a place to do laundry. It's all about solving one problem for someone. And the best way to find your side hustle is to look at your own problems, to yeah. go like, I wish there was a thing that did this. Great. That would be a good side hustle. Or how can you help someone do something, right? So maybe, you know, like you're running a podcast. I have a side hustle that is a podcast editing company. So people that don't want to edit their show can nice. hire me and I do it for them. I'm solving one problem that many people have. So you want to pay attention and start like scratch your own itch. That's the first thing. If you think there should be a better spatula in the world, then figure out a way to make it. If you think that, you know, you'd benefit from a specific sort of template to create something, then make the template and sell it. But the key is going to be that you can't just make something and kind of throw it out there and expect it to do something. You do have to talk about it. You do have Correct. to get people excited about it. And that's sort of where like the, the communication aspect comes in handy is because yes. then you could be really concise about what your side hustle does. So my page yes. is like literally full of different side hustles from, you know, from selling your homework to selling your poop, 
right? Like there, are, <laughs> I cover it all. So um, if you are interested in that kind of thing, I break down side hustles in 60 seconds that you could start this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Paying attention to what problems exist in this world and how can you make it a little bit. Don't you wish there was a sh 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 make it like, yeah. don't you? Honestly, a lot of people are saying that if you're at that point, there should be a better way to blah, 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 blah. OK, focus on one. And I always tell people this. I actually wind up people come to me within PT and they ask me to help them launch podcasts. I wind up. I wouldn't say talking people, more people out of, of, of starting a podcast than in. We go through a paradigm. We go have a conversation. For I'm like, tell me about you. Why do you want to do this? Tell me about what this is going to taste and feel and smell like. And what we wind up finding is people just want a better podcast or something they want to exist. And I say, then you need to commit and create this or, yep. or it's not going to happen. And the reason you said scratch your own itch is – no matter what side hustle you do, no matter what thing, no matter how profitable it is, you're going to hit something I like to call the suck. The suck is going to come. It's going to be a slog. It's going to be, I'm just not feeling it this today, this week, this month. But if it's something, if the area is something you're passionate about, you'll be able to get through that suck and on with your life. If yeah. it's something you're not passionate about, that suck's going to kill. It's going to extinguish everything. Absolutely. So I like where you're headed. I think we're in alignment there. Yeah, it's just simply, you know, make the art you want to see in the world, make the song you want to see in the world, make the yes. product that you think you need. And so, and, you know, a lot of times people will think of something and then somebody already made it, right? Here's, this is, this means you're on the right path. This means this is what your brain is in the right place. So keep looking, right? And, and so many people get instantly defeated and they think of failures as like, just like a representation of themselves. Fail, 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 fail succeed. And that's all I do all day long. I'll try anything. I don't care if it fails because I at least tried. I know I gave mm -hmm. it my all. So don't get discouraged. If you come up with a brilliant idea and someone else did it, that means your brain is working brilliantly. Correct. Keep, keep thinking. What's your twist on that idea? Look, I mean, I started a podcast. Oh my gosh. Like, I guess, I guess, you know what? Everybody should just quit because Jimmy started one and he's yeah. already done. No yeah. way, man. Like you're going to put the twist on whatever this is that I couldn't poss I couldn't possibly do because yep. only you can do it. If you think, and I try to put this in scale to people because people will hear, Oh, you get a million downloads a year. I'll never get there. I go, if it picture the, the house you're in right now, if 30 people showed up to your house, you'd be like, Oh shit, honey, yeah. go get some snacks and drinks. 30 people showing up week after week after week at your house on a Tuesday unannounced. That's, that's a lot of people. It is. Do that for a year. Get 30 people to show up and watch your long form, right? Uh project week over week. I know we get a little bit jaded with a million. Oh, everything's six or seven or eight. You know, how much what comma club are you in this this week? And yeah. and and I understand that. All those comma clubs started at 10 or 20 or 50 exactly. or 100. The only way you get to a million is by touching 10 people's. Uh, scratching 10 people's itches. That's yeah, it. and, when, and when you honor, like, I think a big mistake I see with audiences are, oh, I only have 30 people. So basically you're just diminishing that their, their existence. You want to go all in on those 30 people because they're going right. to get you 30 more. But if you just sit there, like, it, the, the analogy I use for this is you're on a date at a bar and you're talking to a girl who's looking over your shoulder to see who else is there the whole time. Do right. you feel seen? Do you feel like it's going well? No, so stop doing it to the people that are showing up for you and like you like yeah. show them some love. <laughs> I, I will say this as someone who has had podcast success and made it my job. It is like right now, Travis and I are talking and I'm digging this conversation. Right. But there are 23 other hours in the day. And it is sometimes when you don't hear that. This is why I tell you all the time. If you want to hear a topic, if there is someone in the, in the profession or something you want to learn about, do DM me. I'm thirsty for that. I'm yeah. curious about those things. I want to hear, knock on my door. I want, I want to hear, not my actual door. I don't want you to come to my house, but like my virtual door, like by all means, like send me a DM. Um, it, it, I can see where someone's starting and being like, I don't know. I got this. Trust me. Those people who consumed, who bought in, who listened to you, they cared. They gave their time. So we're kind of coming full circle, which is that's a super valuable thing. Why'd you start to make an impact? To be the biggest whatever in the world? Probably not. You wanted to make an impact. You are. And sometimes it's easy to lose sight of that.
Absolutely. Yeah. Your expectations can really kill your output. So yes, I like to expect nothing because then everything's just gravy on top, right? Yeah. You, you want to put out a great message. You want to impact the world one person at a time. That's the yeah. whole game. Yeah. All right. Uh, Travis, we have a section or, or a feature on the show called three questions. Are you ready for three questions? I'm ready. Let's go. Let's three questions. <laughs> All right, three questions uh, brought to you by our friends from the Academy of Orthopedic Physical Therapy. Find them online at orthopt.org. They've got their uh, leading course in uh, the orthopedic space, Current Concepts. They'll take you from wherever you want to go, wherever you are in your orthopedic career, to maybe passing that OCS exam or just leveling up your orthopedics game. Uh, find them again at orthopt.org. All right, so three questions. It is very apropos Ooh, to be using yeah. Podnex on three questions. First question for Travis on three questions. What upcoming life event are you excited about? I, I think it's very good because it's, we're recording in December, early, you know, early 2023. We like for some reason to reset the calendar and then think about things in the future. So what exciting, uh, upcoming life event are you excited about? Um, my kids are getting to the age where I'm going to be able to take them to Disney World. And I'm yeah. pretty excited about that. I, I'm really like I'm building up a lot of hype around it and will continue to because, you know, it's a big investment and i want them to remember it so we're Absolutely. getting to that stage right now where they're going to be able to like really enjoy it as opposed to taking them when they're like three so that, that's not, like being a dad is the is the greatest thing ever for me because i get to remain a child and, and interact with children and have that kind of you know freedom so i'm really mm -hmm. looking forward to the adventures i'll have with them as they get older in your opinion what ages it, what ages are they like when is that what's the tipping point like yes now's the time they'll appreciate it and dig it and get it well so there's seven and i'm sorry seven and five okay and i just want them to be able to remember it so you know yes. probably like either you know six and eight or seven and nine will be the magic yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of number but i just i don't want them to go and then be like i don't remember going because then I, it'll be completely useless i don't understand watching like parents with kids in strollers like yes like honestly like like the kid loves a cardboard box right now like yeah, honestly yeah. the kid loves cardboard box and, and packing foam and they'll put the fork in a in a light socket that is entertainment save yourself some money and invest it in a roth ira take it out in a few years and then yeah go splurge for the uh, for the disney trip all right so that's your upcoming life event second question what is the best thing to happen let's look backwards what's the best thing to happen to you this year uh, this year I, you know, I basically hit a hundred thousand followers on social media and I'd been working really hard day after day to try to grow that audience. So that was pretty awesome. Um, I'm alive, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> like with everything that's going on in the world with health and you know, I'm just, I'm still here. And so that to yeah. me is a giant win. Big deal. All right. Third question, a final question on three questions. What I'm interested in this because we do similar things. Okay. What do you keep on your desk or workspace area that boosts your mood or boost? I wanted to ask boost your creativity. Like what do you keep in your space? Well, my desk is an absolute mess. Um, I have That's a mine. little, I have a little Buddha on my desk, a gold Buddha that reminds me that you know, to take a breath every once in a while. And that kind of keeps me centered. What keeps me creative on this desk? Um, you know, honestly, it's, it's, it's pen and paper, man. I just, mm. I like to doodle. I like to write an idea down. I like to, you know, kind of script things and just, you know, put, like there's something about a physical pen to a piece of paper that is just so much different than typing. And so, yeah, what keeps me creative is I keep all my ideas. And just because an idea comes out, it might not be good, but it just might not have had its birth yet. So you have yes. to keep your ideas in places because you yes. might come back and be like, I got it. And then that is the catalyst. So, you know, my entire office is just full of guitars and um, just toys for me to play with. And so if I ever need a break from working, I'll just go sit down and play the drums, right. I'll play the guitar or I'll... Uh, you know, I have a 3D printer downstairs. I'll go 3D print something. And I just kind of reset through creativity. I like that. Yeah, I call them idea parts. Yeah. I was like, I, like, I got I got something. It's like almost like when you that feeling when you have to sneeze. It's like, what is it? Like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It, nothing now. But man, when I get the other 15%, this thing is something. Like, what exactly. is it? Don't know. But save that. Like, that's like lightning in a bottle, I think. And 
because you can't complete it right now does not mean it has no value. Save it. It's your swipe file. Yeah, that's inspiration. That's a, a gift from the gods, right? Like if yeah. you have an inspiration, write it down somewhere. I call it an idea orphanage, and then I go adopt yeah. ideas, right? Yeah, and bring together, man. All. Yeah. All right. That's three questions uh, brought to you by our friends at the Jackson Therapy Partners, providing awesome adventures in patient care for physical therapists who care about where they're going. JacksonTherapy.com. I have built in, or I thought I have, uh, an opportunity for reels into my podcast. And I did this a long time ago before there were reels. Okay. And I call it the parting shot. So it's not an accident. I mean, it was. It's kismet. So the parting shot brought to you by the Academy of Orthopedic PT. Again, find them at orthopt.org. It, this came about for two reasons, and you can appreciate this. As a student PT interviewing some of my idols, I never knew how to be like, hey, um, like, let's just, we got to gotta wrap it up here. We're done. Yeah. And also, I wanted it to do it in a way that, like, there was a, like, we're telling a story. This is a climax. So thus, and I had to make it out, you know, it's drinking related. It's the parting shot. Yes. So I wrapped it. That's what it has the name in it, right? It's like when a, when a, a bar DJ plays his semisonic closing time, it's like, okay, we're out of here. So parting shot, your last chance for that mic drop moment or the soapbox statement, something that we will use as the reel to promote this episode. Travis Brown, what do you got? I think that your your value, it comes from authenticity and your experiences. So the more you share about yourself and how you can help other people on video is the more people will like, know, and trust you. And we know that people do business with who they know, like, and trust. So if you're on the fence about putting yourself out on video, I want you to ask yourself, what's really behind that fear? Is it being judged? Is it failing? What's really behind that fear? Because this video thing is not the future. It's the present. And if you really want to impact people all over the globe, this is your best chance to show up, tell them what you know, and build your community around your business, around your movement, and actually make that impact in the world that you're trying to do, maybe in brick and mortar, maybe just like at your house. So put yourself out there, and I think you'll be surprised by the, the result of that. I think you'll make new friends, new connections, and you'll get to make an impact in the world. You might not see it right away, but by helping people get what they want, you'll get everything that you want in your life. Like a pro, wrapping it up with the very quotable. At Travis Brown, Travis, somebody who's been, somebody. the reason we're having this conversation is because everything you just said, you did, and I was one of those people watching on the screen going, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. <laughs> that that makes my like, day. And then I literally said that, like, why don't I have this guy on my podcast? I'm honestly interested. And if my audience is interested in the same things, they'll be interested in everything this guy is saying. So please follow this guy and then think, how do I take what Travis is talking about and draw us? Because we know there's a straight line between any two points. What he's talking about today, is there a straight line between what I'm good at or passionate about or want to do? And then draw that line. Uh, Travis, appreciate your time, man. They say the best conversations happen at happy hour. Thanks for coming to ours. Hey, man. Like what you hear? Tell a friend or leave a review on iTunes or Google Play. The show today is brought to you by the Brooks Institute of Higher Learning, an innovator in providing advanced post-professional education. The Brooks IHL offers seven on-site PT residencies, including orthopedics, women's health, geriatrics, pediatrics, sports, and neurology, as well as a neurologic OT fellowship, a competitive OMPT fellowship, and a speech therapy clinical fellowship. Therapists that complete a residency or fellowship through the Brooks IHL will markedly advance their knowledge and skills in a specialty area of practice. Learn more about how a residency or fellowship can help you advance your professional development at brooksihl.org. Our home on the internet. PTPinecast.com. Created by Build PT.
Build PT provides marketing services specifically for private practice PTs. From website development and hosting. Providing content marketing solutions for PT clinics across the country. See what Build PT can do for you today at buildpt.com. The PT Pinecast is a product of PT Pinecast LLC. It is hosted and produced by PT Pinecast CEO Jim McKay and CBO Sky Donovan from Marymount University. We talk PT, drink beer, and record it. This has been another pour from the PT Pinecast. The PT Pinecast is intended for educational purposes only. No clinical decision making should be based solely on one source. While care is taken to ensure accuracy, factual errors can be present. More on the show at ptpinecast.com. 